check out the Bondo situation. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Look at the Bondo. Look at all the Bondo cracks. How much Bondo is in this thing? Someone thought they were doing something good here. Wow. Look at it. Just One. look at that. Nice. Oh yeah, this one's thick. <laughs> Sweet. There's a couple hundred dollars worth of Bondo in here. Alright, it's not gonna cut itself out. After some careful consideration, I feel a sawzall is the best tool for this job. Just look at that. Yeah, this is quite the piece of engineering. The piece of Bondo. <laughs> Let me bring you guys on in for a closer look. This just tore off. It wasn't even really welded to that. Just some pretty flimsy tack welds. They had an idea, that's for sure. It's just not my cup of tea. So out it all comes. Cut all the tacks off here. Same over there. Rip all that out. Get all of this beautiful engineering out of here. Oh no. I broke the piece of bondo. Just look at it. Just and look at that. I don't have words. I really don't. Like, all those welds broke. Clearly, whoever did the frame. And whoever did this were two different people. Now we are three weeks 
from leaving. And uh, there's a lot to do. So I'm going to stop talking and uh, get back to work. All right, we're making some progress. All I can do is keep cutting. Well, that was a chore and a half. I've been putting that off since I bought the car and I'm glad that I took the time to do it now. Tomorrow I can get everything cleaned up and we have a clean slate of an interior to start with. For the backseat area, I'll be taking the firewall out of the other car for the seat support. And then we'll fit that. I'll have to uh, get creative with trimming the seat to fit the new hump. And then up front, got all that out. There. Just the amount of Bondo in this was insane. Like literally the only Bondo in the car was in the center console. Just craziness. But some people would say the same about me for putting this in a Dodge. So I guess to each their own. Yeah, the, I, it's, it's late, Friday night. I worked all day and then worked on my car till 10 o'clock at night. So it's late, I'm gonna ramble. So I'm gonna cut the video here. And see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. We're back in the shop. It's time to get last night's mess cleaned up. And then once we get all that cleaned up, we can start wiring the car. And today's timestamp is... Saturday, September 2nd. have decided that it is getting our old 1959 dash. It's already been signed by a couple people. And after looking at the damage done to this dash from the center console, we're gonna swap it out. I like that dash better anyway. The unfortunate thing though, Someone decided that they wanted to weld this dash in. It's welded there, where it's supposed to be bolted in up here, it's welded in. So you're gonna have to drill those out, cut that. But at the end of the day, it's gonna be worth it because that dash just make, made that car and it's gonna help this car feel like that car. Perfect. 
Okay, let's start drilling some welds. Don't know why someone would do that. There's some questionable stuff done to this car. All right, we got the dash out. That was a little bit of a chore. But now we can start transferring all the stuff from the other car into this car. Now that's out of the way. All right, it's time to remove the dash support and the pedal assemblies from this car. I'm also going to take the steering column because it looks much nicer than that one, other one. And I need to get the wiper linkage out. All right, we got the pedal installed. We have our dash brace installed as well. Clutch sleeve is installed, everything works good. So we're gonna go ahead and put the dash in. When the dash isn't welded in, it's actually pretty easy to remove. It's got the two bolts at the bottom that allow it to pivot. Then you just try and do this with one hand. Roll the dash up in place. Bolt it down in the front. Two bolts on either side, and she's good to go. Right, I'm gonna put the camera away so I can bolt the dash in. All right, next we're gonna install the modified 1959 Dodge steering column. To me, it just looks so much nicer having an original style steering column in the car rather than having the 1970s. All right, after a couple hours of fighting, we finally got this seat to fit somewhat decent. This is the uh, back seat from the other 59. Seeing as this car didn't come with any actual seats, it just came with those uh, black leather buckets there that are from, uh, I'm pretty sure, Volkswagen Golf. Got that fitting, not too bad. I got a seat cover for it at home. Put the seat cover on after. Kind of looks plushy. Eventually, I'd like to get a better seat figured out for the back. But it's going to be difficult with the transmission tunnel raised so much for the uh, air suspension. But what can you do? It's part of uh, hot rodding, and we're just making it work. It's actually not too bad. If you're tall, your head does touch. And that's the problem with a uh, two-door. They're slicked back that's what gives them such a cool looking silhouette yeah that's the progress on the back seat steering columns installed next i got to make the bench seat fit the front and that's going to be a little bit of a chore as well got a special treat for the carpet wait till you guys see it If you can't have fun with your carpet, what can you do? Actually, we're going to turn the whole thing around. Yeah. No, you're thinking, why didn't I buy a carpet for the car? Well, any carpet I buy is not going to fit because of the transmission tunnel. So, next best thing is to buy a rug for your house and make that fit. The key is to make sure you got enough for the tow board first, and then you can start making the slices to help it to help it fit around the trans tunnel. 
we have carpet. We even had enough left over to do the back window. All right, we got the seats and carpet in. It's looking much better. Next, we're gonna start putting the wiring in. Now that I have all the pedals and steering column in where it needs to go, I can have a pretty good idea where to put this. I'm thinking right up in here. I guess so you guys can see. Somewhere up in here like that, I get it mounted. And then we can start routing the wires front to back, wherever they need to go. And uh, yeah, I'll bring you guys back in once we get started. All right, we got the fuse box up in place. And we're gonna start running some wires. Already got the forward lighting harness running out the firewall. It comes out here. Underneath the hinge and then disappears in the inner fender and then it's gonna run along this on the inside comes out here and it'll get tucked up in there it'll look nice and clean then for back here this is the rear lighting harness it's gonna run through there just like that now it's just time to fish it all through all right bring you guys back in once i pull that through all right so we got the wires fished through see them in the quarter panel up over the wheel well into the trunk and they come through here running right along the factory holders I'm gonna put them all in conduit I just don't have any right now I need to go get some but the conduit it's easy enough to slip on and push down uh, some of this stuff we're not gonna use this was a universal kit, so it's got like for power windows and power locks and stuff like that. So we're not going to use that stuff, but there's extra wire here if we need it. I mainly uh, wanted this for the lighting. So this new harness is going to control all the lighting. We're going to use all the factory LT1 stuff for the engine. So I need to go ahead and get all that cleaned up. All that needs to fit under the dash, so there's way too much wire for what we need, but that's fine. We'll clean it, clean it up, pare it down. Next, we need to run this wiring harness through the firewall and then find a place to mount the PCM under the dash. Once we get that all mounted up, then I can go ahead and clean all that other wiring up to run the engine. So essentially the car will have two wiring harnesses one completely separate for the engine and one for all the lighting and features on the car. Well, that's gonna do it for working on the car this weekend. We got a lot done. Got the seats in, got the carpet in, part of the wiring is done, steering column and the old dash is in. Got the trunk working. Pretty productive weekend overall. Uh, hopefully next weekend we will have the car up and running by the end of the weekend. I need to do gas tank, fuel lines, and finish up the wiring for that, and a cooling system, but we'll see how that goes. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and thanks for watching.